Hello, this is Bruno Luce with GLB Productions and today I've got another quick tip for all you live sound guys out there. Now this one comes from an event that I was doing at the beginning of this week and essentially I was doing sound for a session of Bible Study Fellowship, uh, also known as BSF. Now BSF meets in host churches and this particular host church, they use a Yamaha QL5. This is a fairly large digital console. And in this case, it was connected through a fairly extensive Dante audio networking system. Fortunately, the setup for this particular event is very simple. We've got a couple of mics in the piano and we have a gooseneck mic on the lectern, that's all. So just three channels. Now, the lecturer was due to go up to open the session at 7.15 p.m. Uh, BSF is very particular about starting and ending on time. One of the promises that they make to their members is that they commit to start and end on time, and they really mean that to the minute. Now. At 7.12 p.m., I had a very, very strong feeling that I should check the lectern mic. Now, we'd already loaded the event preset, and this should have ensured that everything was working. But I didn't see any signal present lights on that particular channel. Right? Normally, you'd get at least one bar from the conversation and general hubbub in the room, but I didn't see anything. So I queued up the channel in my headphones and sure enough, it wasn't working. Uh, I confirmed that phantom power was on and that the input was being correctly routed to that particular channel. As you know, with digital consoles, the channels can be routed and patched internally, right? Input one can be routed to any channel strip on the control surface that you want. We thought at that time that the issue might have been somewhere within the Dante network, but it turned out to be something a lot simpler than that. So we only had a few minutes to solve the problem. So as a temporary fix, we put an SM58 on a microphone stand and just lined it up with the existing lectern mic, as you can see in this picture. Uh, the time was so short that we didn't even have time to unplug the existing gooseneck. I did some quick EQ, uh, high pass, and a little bit of low mid cut, uh, put on some compression, and we just ran with it. Uh, we actually ended up doing the entire session using that uh, SM58 and at the end of it uh, my fellow operator remarked that it actually sounded better than the existing lectern mic. A lesson there for everyone. Now after the lecture was over uh, we discovered the source of the problem. There was actually a switch on the mic base that had been turned off and we hadn't seen this switch because as you can see from the picture it had been covered by a piece of tape, presumably put there to stop people from turning it off in the first place. <laughs> so some irony to that. So all we had to do was just press that little switch down, the red light came on, and we were back in business. Simple solution to a potentially uh, very distracting problem. So I think there are three lessons to be learned from this. First of all, it's important to always have a backup mic ready. Uh, sometimes you'll have problems that cannot be diagnosed in time and you need a backup that is known to be working that you can fall back on. Uh, in this case, we always have an SM58 set up on a stand uh, specifically for this purpose. And now what I've done is, is I've saved the EQ and compression presets into our standard show preset so that if anything goes wrong with the main lectern mic, we just plop that stand in front and we're good to go. For critical events, it's worth actually having two mics mounted on the lectern or podium. You see this in a lot of corporate events where you'll see two uh, gooseneck mics 
on the podium. Don't switch both of them on because you'll have a big comb filtering issue, but just have the second one there so that if the main one goes down for any reason, you mute that, unmute the spare, and you're good to go. The second thing I think we learned is that you should check the simple things first, right? We were thinking, is this an issue with the Dante card or is there some network problem? In the end, it turned out to be a simple switch. And finally, of course, don't use mics with switches for live sound. <laughs> mics with switches are for karaoke, bingo callers, and auctioneers, not for pro audio. This is Bruno Luce with GLB Productions. Thanks very much for watching. Have you had a problem like this in your recent uh, show history? If you do, please share it with us in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.